Hi, so previously we looked at the different types of rocks and one of these rocks that we looked at was igneous rocks. Now just to recap your memory, the word igneous means fire, which implies that the rocks form from really, really, really hot material known as magma beneath the crust of the earth. So let's look at the different types of igneous intrusions that we can find in our system. This picture, we said our dike feeds our volcano and it flows out into a volcanic pipe. And now we're just going to take a closer look at the setting over here. A volcanic pipe. And this is what a volcanic pipe looks like. It has a big carrot shaped format. So we call it carrot shaped. And it's got different zones. So at the very top of the volcano is a volcano crater or a crater zone. This is where the magma, magma flows out as lava onto the surface of the earth. So that's your crater zone. Then we've got our diatreme, which is basically the middle part over here. And when we get deeper down to the narrow part, this is our root. I want you to realize that a volcano does not always necessarily come from a dike. It could come from a sill or from a batholith directly. So any form of magma that can feed the volcano, volcanic pipe can form a volcano. Okay, a very common example um, of a volcanic pipe that we can still see today, but it's not filled with magma anymore because it's completely solidified, is the big hole in Kimberley. So when these volcanic pipes mineralize and crystallize, they can host diamonds. Not all of them do, but some of them do. And the big hole in Kimberley is a perfect example of an ancient volcano that has completely solidified and crystallized and hosted diamonds within this part of the volcanic pipe. This was then mined successively downwards. When we deal with batholiths, so batholiths were the big dome-shaped intrusions at the bottom, we need to consider how they cool. So when these batholiths or igneous intrusions cool down, solidify, and then crystallize in the process, they will form contractual joints. Contractual joints because the rock or the magma actually contracts as it cools down and it forms these vertical downward joints to show that it has cooled down. As the overlying strata is then eroded away, we form what is known as offloading joints, and that's any horizontal crack that you might find along igneous intrusions. So here we are. We had this big batholith. When it cooled down, it formed contractual joints, which ran vertically. And as these overlying strata was eroded away, it started forming offloading joints as it could expand again due to the release of pressure. Furthermore, we're going to look at the different landforms that are associated with igneous intrusions in just a bit. So first, I just want to recap the batholiths and their location again. I want you to realize that they are dome shaped. So it's got a nice little dome shape to it. Now, when batholiths, which are very deep beneath the surface of the earth, start to cool down, they actually cool down really, really slowly. This allows for quite big crystals to form, and it also forms a massive texture. I hope you can still remember what massive texture means. If you don't, just refer back to the previous lesson. So from these batholiths, what type of landforms do you think we can expect? Here's a very good example in South Africa. This is known as Paul Bach or Paul Rock in the Northern Cape. And it's a very big granitic dome. So when the batholiths cool down, solidify, crystallize, and when the overlying strata is eroded, what we get to see on the surface of the earth after quite a number of years is what is known as granitic domes. Here's a very good example over there. They make for good tourist attractions, especially these ones, because they're quite big. When they're really, really big, quite massive in size, we would refer to it as a monolith. Here we've got nice batholiths again. 
Here's your typical dome shape that we could see from the batholiths. Here we've got a few contractual joints as it cooled down and contracted. And we've even got our horizontal or floating joints as the overlying strata was eroded. Let's move on to the next type of landform that we can expect. In other words, all these layers over here have been completely eroded away. The sill now forms a cap rock, which cannot be eroded further. It doesn't erode downwards. It only erodes backwards. You'll deal with that a bit more or in better detail next year, but it is known as scarp retreat. So scarp retreat is when the cap rock or the sill erodes backwards. Because this cap rock is weather resistant, it won't weather or erode downwards, which means that the height will stay the same until it is completely um, backwashed and eroded away from the sides. So here we've got a plateau. Plateau can stretch for hundreds of kilometers, a very large piece of flat land. Then we've got mesas, buttes, pointed buttes, and conical hills. This picture is a bit misleading, but I want you to notice the difference between a mesa and a butte. When we look at the mesa, the width of the mesa is supposed to be a lot bigger than the height of the mesa. So that's why I said this picture is a bit misleading and falsified. This width over here of the cap rock on top of it is supposed to be bigger than the height of the mesa. This would rather still be classified as a butte. This would be closer to a mesa. But regardless, as long as you can remember that, mesas are wider than they are tall. Buttes are the exact opposite. The width over here of the cap rock is smaller than the height of the butte. So this is known as a butte. A pointed butte forms when there's only a very small piece of cap rock left, and a conical hill forms when there's no cap rock left on top of the sedimentary layer. Let's quickly look at how this cap rock can actually erode. So there's a process known as backwashing, which erodes the underlying sedimentary strata. It weathers and erodes due to wind and water, rain, etc. And it keeps eroding this portion over here through backwash. Backwash because it washes backwards and it washes all the sedimentary um, material away in this portion over here. We're then left with a piece of cap rock that'll hang in the air. But because it's dense and quite heavy and due to gravity, it will eventually crack and break and crumble to the ground. That is known as scarp retreat. So your cap rock erodes backwards, erode in inverted commas, due to scarp retreat. And scarp retreat is only possible due to backwashing of the underlying sedimentary strata. Hope you got that. Here's a nice little example. In South Africa, this is the Three Sisters. Over here, we've got a nice mesa. I wouldn't call this a plateau. It's not big enough. But this is definitely a mesa. It's a lot wider than it is tall. And over here, we've got our buttes. So there's a butte. There's a butte. There's a butte. There we go. So we've got buttes. It's not as wide as it is tall. So it's a lot taller than it is wide. Here's your homework. Hope you learned something today.